Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kelsey and I'm a traditional artist and illustrator specializing in oil paints. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how I use oil paints without any toxic solvents or mediums. I'm basically gonna be walking you guys through all the products that I use and my technique to keep myself safe while using oil paints. So first off, the paint itself. Several pigments used in traditional oil paint, like lead and cadmiums, are really toxic for your health. So in order to have a completely non-toxic workflow, you're going to have to find some replacements for things like flake white, lead white, and cadmium red. So if you have a studio that doesn't have really good ventilation, or if you have kids and pets that might have access to your studio or your art supplies, there is a version of oil paints called water mixable oil paints that are basically completely non-toxic. I tried several brands of water mixable oil paints and the best one that I could find was Holbein's Duo Aqua line. These were um, the first oil paints that I ever actually tried. I didn't start out with traditional oil paints and I like them a lot. They're pretty good. Um, I would say they're like not quite professional quality, like a bit more like in a studio sort of like student quality kind of paint. Um, but they are pretty good. I do still use them in my palette to this day for like certain colors that are hard to find in more traditional oil painting lines, like fluorescent pink, for example, is one of them that I use all the time. Um, and an important thing to note with the Holbein Duo Aqua Paints is that they have a slightly different texture than regular oil paints. And while they say they can be diluted with water, like acrylics, these paints do work better um, with mediums specifically designed for oil paints. If you dilute these with water, they're gonna sort of be kind of gross. The texture isn't ideal at all. It feels really weird and bad. I, I would not recommend diluting these with water unless you absolutely have to. Maybe for something like an underpainting that could work well, but in, yeah, don't do it. It's bad. <laughs> Use oil painting mediums. And as we're about to talk about, um, there are alternatives to things like turpentine and mineral spirits. But if you're really committed to using traditional oil paints, like I am, but you still want to have a mostly non-toxic workflow, Utrecht, am I saying that right? Utrecht? Utrecht? Utrecht. Utrecht. Utrecht carries a line of cadmium-free oil paints, like cadmium red and cadmium yellow, so you can still have those brilliant reds and mixing colors without sacrificing your health. If you absolutely can't live without flake white, for example, Gamblin carries a flake white replacement that, to my knowledge, at least and in my experience, handles really similarly to the real thing. And that brings us to mediums. Turpentine and mineral spirits have been used by artists for centuries, but they're really damaging to your health. They have just extremely toxic fumes and they're, they're just like an enormous health risk. But luckily, there are a few alternatives. I tested a few non-toxic painting mediums from Gamblin, but they have really bad smells, so I don't really know if I can recommend them. I don't know, maybe if you have like really good ventilation where you can't really smell anything in your studio, this would work fine for you. But I settled on the mediums from Chelsea Classical Studio. Their lean medium is actually like, where, where is it? I have it somewhere. Their lean medium looks like this and it actually has lavender spike oil in it, so it makes my workspace smell actually pretty amazing, um, which is a, a definite change for my studio smelling like bad paint smell, even though the stuff that I've seen wasn't toxic. So Chelsea Classical Studio, um, their mediums aren't toxic, they don't have toxic fumes, they're not carcinogenic, um, carcinogenic, and um, they offer mediums to thin paints as well as thicken them, they have some varnishes, like Damar varnish, um, and then some retouch varnishes, as well as specialty brush cleaning oil, too, um, that also has lavender spike oil in it, and they carry some brush cleaning soaps and stuff. And speaking of brush cleaners, it's pretty common to clean your brushes, or at least to get most of the paint off, with the same medium that you use to like dilute your paints. And I don't actually do this. It's totally fine if you do. Um, but Chelsea's Classical Studio Mediums are pretty expensive, um, like this 8 ounce bottle I believe was like 40 bucks, um, which is a lot. So I typically wipe the excess paint off on a rag and then I clean my brushes with like a two-step system. I use Treckles oil painting soap, um, their linseed oil soap, to sort of clean my brushes and then as the second and final step I use Treckles 
brush restore to sort of reshape my brushes, which prolongs their life and uh, yeah, just makes them look in tip top shape basically. A huge part of oil painting though is actually rags. Um, rags are used, as I just mentioned, to wipe away excess oil paint as you're cleaning your brushes and even just like in the middle of a painting session to sort of like clean your brush and then pick a different color. Um, but it's actually a painting tool in and of itself. You can sort of use it in the underpainting stage, sort of wipe away some underpainting. Um, or if you're working at Gorsai, it's a really popular way to do that too. Um, and rags that have a lot of oil paint on them can't actually be thrown in the trash. This is really bad. <laughs> Please don't do this. <laughs> Please. You pinky promise? You, you pinky promise? Please don't do this. Pinky promise. Okay. Okay. You pinky promise. <laughs> Um, as these guys dry, they're a serious fire hazard, and they're also just like toxic waste that you should not take this. Just don't, please don't throw it in a trash can. It's just, it's a bad idea. And so what I did is I bought a fireproof metal can that's in my garage, specifically designed to hold oily waste like this, and I put my rags in them when they're covered in oil paint and they live in there and it's not a fire hazard. <laughs> and when the can is full, I just take that to my oily waste, oily household waste place in my city's waste management thing. And um, yeah, it's done. But yeah, definitely don't throw your oil paint soaked rags just in the trash. That is a horrible idea. <laughs> my last recommendation for you guys is to use something called ArtGuard. ArtGuard is a product offered by Windsor & Newton, and basically, if you get paint on your hands but you don't want to wear gloves, this sort of acts as a barrier between your hands and everything else that you touch that sort of protects your health and um, makes sure that like the oil paint doesn't absorb into your skin. Um, yeah. It makes removing oil paint easier too when you wash your hands, and it protects you from, it says, all types of artist materials. So, um, it's a lotion, um, you basically like, you just take a tiny little bit of it and you rub it on your hands and it creates a barrier between your skin and everything else and it makes washing things off easier at the end of a painting session and it's just that final layer of protection on top of everything else that you're doing to make sure that you're safe. And that's basically it for this video. Make sure to give me a like if you enjoyed, don't forget to comment and subscribe because next week's video is going to be a tour of my workspace. So I'm gonna share you all of my tips, how I got into this space, um, everything that I do to store my art supplies, how I sort of have my workspace set up and it's gonna be really good and you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. So yeah, all right, bye guys.